Stream AG, a joint venture of five major energy supply companies from different European countries, was established in December 2005 with the purpose of planning, constructing and operating a new pipeline through the Baltic Sea. Main contractor for construction of the 1,224 km long natural gas twin pipeline is the Italian company Saipem. The Nord Stream pipelines will link the Russian town of Viborg through the Baltic Sea with the German Lugmin. The pipelines are built in different sections, constructed at several locations over the route at the same time to minimize the execution time of the works. In November 2009, Saipem awarded the Boscalis Offshore Roder Nielsen Joint Venture, in short Born, the subcontract for the execution of the trenching, pipe pull and backfilling works for the 26 km long pipeline section coming ashore in Germany, the German landfall section. The German landfall section is situated in a dedicated flora-fauna habitat area. Following European directives, flora-fauna habitats are considered environmentally particularly valuable and therefore need specific protection. The site establishment work started in April 2010 and the onshore installation of the cofferdam commenced. The required construction materials were shipped to Lumine from the Netherlands. The first 200 metres of sheet pile walls were driven with hydraulic vibrators. Then two sheet pile walls 10 metres apart were driven back to the shoreline. Once the sheet piling was completed, a special raised hydraulic excavator dredged the soils within the coffer dam down to design depth. The dredged material was stockpiled adjacent to the coffer dam on the sheltered western side and the stockpile area was secured with a silt screen to minimise material migration. Mid-May, the construction of the 550 metre long offshore part of the cofferdam started, with the installation of a causeway which enabled onshore construction equipment to work above water. Simultaneously with the works at the cofferdam, the excavation works for the pipeline commenced. Two bucket line dredges and three backhoe dredges started digging, assisted by a total of 18 split hopper barges, which transported the excavated soils to the designated disposal areas. In principle, five different types of soil were dredged. Top layer, suitable for reuse, sandy backfill material, as well as clay, silt, and organic peach. Each soil type was transported to and placed at its designated disposal area. The bucket ladder dredges were used to dredge the top layers, which were temporarily stored separate from the general backfill materials. The total top layer quantity was subdivided into six main areas of different top layers, which also were stored separate from each other. This method was developed in order to backfill the ecological important top layer material as much as possible and as close as possible to its original location. The trench was on average 3.0 meters deep with varying side slopes dependent on the surrounding soil conditions. After excavation of the top layers by bucket line dredges and the underlying layers by hopper dredges, the last cut to produce the pre-pipe lay trench bottom within design specifications was again carried out by bucket line dredges. The required dredging tolerance was plus 0 to minus 30 centimetres, which only could be achieved by use of state-of-the-art electronic dredge monitoring systems. The whole trench was out-surveyed with multi-beam equipment prior to placement of the first and also the second pipeline. 
main driver for the disposal concept was to reuse as much of the dredged volumes as possible. Therefore, all materials used for later backfill operations were temporarily stockpiled at the dumping ground near Usedom. All cohesive materials were transported to the port of Mukhan, where the soles were used beneficially for the construction of a port extension, which was executed separately from the Nord Stream project. A limited volume of organic materials was deposited at the Drigger landfill near Stralsund. With the number of up to 40 vessels working on the trench at the same time, lots of personnel had to be safely transferred from the dedicated crew transfer point in the harbour of Lubmin to the marine equipment. Some 100 persons transferred from water to land and vice versa each day using the tailor-made mooring facilities in Lubmin Harbour and passing the so-called port captain's office. The born port captain made sure that only authorised personnel transferred through the port facility and that all transfers were carried out in a safe and efficient manner. To achieve this, four designated crew transfer vessels were used during the operation and all vessel movements were monitored by an online vessel tracking system. Directly upon completion of the Cofferdam works, the pull wire anchor station was placed. It consists of the anchor itself, a linear 500 ton winch, and several roller setups for guidance of the pull wire. The wire lay barge Hansa positioned herself close to the cofferdam. The offshore end of the pull wire was brought to the shoreline over the prepared onshore roller setup. Via a polypropylene rope, a steel winch wire was transferred from the Hansa to the shoreline. There, the steel wire was connected to the spelter socket of the actual pull wire. Now, the onboard winches of the Hansa could pull the wire slowly from the beach to its designated position at the offshore end. Once the pull wire reached the Hansa, it was placed on the seabed, and by moving the Hansa alternately seaward, the wire reached its final position. There, the spelter socket was placed into the water with a marker buoy, ready for pickup by the pipe lay barge Castoro 10. Offshore supply vessels transported the pipe sections from the pipe storage area in Mukhan to the lay barge Castoro 10. There, the pipes were inspected and prepared for treatment on board and every pipe joint was automatically welded in the production workshop or firing line. Afterwards, the welds were inspected using an ultrasonic system. After acceptance of the welds, the joints would be cooled and cleaned before receiving the field joint coating consisting of an anti-corrosion heat shrink sleeve made of high density polyurethane after which a polyurethane foam filler was injected in a temporary steel casing to make the joint flush with a concrete weight coating of the pipeline joints. All welding operations were monitored from the bridge of the lay barge. Once a pipe was completely welded and protected, another pipe section left the pipe lay barge via the stinger. A construction at the aft of the lay barge which forced the pipe to be lowered to the seabed in the shape of an S, therefore the name of the laying system, S-Lay. During the welding of the first 1.5 kilometers of both pipelines, the eastern and the western, the Castoro 10 stayed in a stationary position, while the pipes were pulled onshore by the onshore winch. First, the eastern 48-inch pipeline was laid. For this, the pull wire was connected to the first pipe section and the combined pipes with a total length of 1,500 meters have been pulled in 12 meter steps, the length of a single pipe section, by the winch to the onshore station over a period of three days. The progress of the pulling operation was carefully monitored to make sure the pipe was placed within plus minus 0.5 meters from its theoretical position. For the 
Pipe pull operations, buoyancy tanks were mounted on the pipeline at regular intervals to reduce friction between pipeline and the sea bottom whilst being pulled ashore. After the first kilometers of the eastern pipeline had been placed, the lay barge returned back to the shoreline to execute the second pipe pull of the western pipeline, well ahead of schedule. With completion of the second pipe pull, all pulling equipment was demobilized and complete dismantling of the cofferdam started. Various technical interdependencies of this schedule-driven project required close liaison of all parties involved. Therefore, daily site meetings were held where all aspects of the project were discussed in a spirit of good cooperation. Challenges were overcome before they became problems, which was a joint success of client, contractor and subcontractor. pipe poles, the dredging focus shifted towards the use of trailing suction hopper dredges, while in the outer section of the works, still pre-lay trenching prior to placement of the gas pipes was executed, with bucket line dredges, backhoes and trailing suction hopper dredges, in the inner section the backfill of soils on top of the placed pipes commenced. This resulted in a highly dynamic and challenging logistical operation whereby interface management played a crucial role. For example, vessels disposing soils were dredged from the outer sections at the temporary storage area Usedom, whilst other vessels were dredging material in the same storage area to be used for backfilling of the inner trench section. At the same time, import of material from the borough area Trompavik started up. For geostatical reasons, very coarse material was required around the pipelines with the nominal coverage up to top of pipe to prevent liquefaction of the surrounding soils. This coarse sand was delivered by large hopper dredges and placed in a predefined section of the trench already dredged to design specifications. From this temporary rehandle pit, smaller trailers took up the coarse material and distributed it over the required trench sections within the Greifswalder Bodden. At its discharge location, the trailers would connect to floating pipelines and pump the soils to a spreader pontoon, which positioned itself over the pipe, either on an anchor spread or using a dynamic positioning system. Layers of coarse backfill material from the Trumpavik and subsequently general backfill material from the temporary storage area Usedom were then sprayed on top of the pipelines till the trench was backfilled within plus minus 20 centimeters of the original pre-excavation situation. In order to achieve the tight contractual backfill tolerances, various automation systems on board of the spreader pontoons were used and the results checked by hydrographic surveys on a 24-7 base. The soil balance of imported material versus surveyed backfill volume in the trench was updated daily to establish the practical losses. This figure was also important from an environmental point of view as turbidity was restricted and the specified threshold value had to be complied. Turbidity monitoring buoys were placed offshore well ahead of the commencement of the works to gain reliable background data of the natural environment. The buoys were solar powered and sent all their data to web-based data bank, accessible for the client's environmental advisors at any moment in time. As the turbidity buoys were positioned in an exposed marine environment for more than half a year, regular maintenance had to be carried out. Furthermore, all sensors needed to be recalibrated on a monthly base in anticipation of seasonal changes